I made it another year. Yeah. Fucking A. Still unkillable. Not for lack of trying. The motherfuckers have tried to take me out one way or another. But proof of life, December 31st, 2001. And I'm still kicking. I'm still breathing. Another year under my belt. Another couple notches. Carved into my, into my belt. Carved into the stock of my boomstick. And it won't stop. These past couple of years I'm sure have been categorized by some listeners as having been tumultuous, having been rocky, uncertain, uh, unprecedented because of the variants and their promotion. God damn, they got a good PR team, man. As far as as far as being able to uh, send a broadcast message and have it line up with an agenda, I gotta say, they got some things on lock for the most part. But there's still so much gray area that's unexplored. There's still so much uncharted territory from where, from, from in which product, profit, benefit can be derived from. I don't know, motherfuckers want to focus on the negatives. Maybe bad news does sell. Maybe it sells better than sex. With the way th things are going in the modern world, quote unquote, modern world. <laughs> Some shit's been hyped up for no reason. Hyper sensationalized, hyper sexualized. And then other facets of life have been discounted, denigrated, degraded, and berated pretty much for not fitting the narrative shall we say but it's corporate you lean with it you rock with it you lean with it you rock with it <laughs> and just before folks can get a good grasp of what's going on a good hold a good understanding corporate corporate leans and corporate rocks and we have to be the ones to run with it sure we do have some power within our own jurisdiction as far as influence as far as persuasion and convenience goes See, I was going to say convincing, but I feel like convenience is a great persuader. Convenience is a great form of influence. But onward to 2022. We're going to carry a lot of the good things and likely a lot of the bad things. We as individuals want to work on becoming better. Want to work on being better. Nothing, nothing 
can cause us to sacrifice our end objectives. Nothing, nothing or nobody that wants to come around us be our associates, become our affiliates, can work against us. And it's not necessarily us, like me. I mean, the royal us. For the benefit. For the innovative. For the creative. For good. Ideally, we would like to have missions of peace, but um, I feel like just the word mission in and of itself connotes a sense of structural violence that has to be overcome. But it's good saying it out loud, thinking on it to myself. All my associates, my homies, men and women, who have aligned their interests with me, either on their own of either on their own accord or with a little help from yours truly. It's been my pleasure to serve y'all. It is my pleasure to serve you. And just know that I do it for us. Some say the road's going to get more rocky. I don't know. Can't really think that far into the future. With motherfucking mandates coming down every couple days. Flip-flopping on shit. They don't really know how to... I mean, they have they have this... I, they, but I mean, they at the top have this idealized concept, idealized perspective of how to run the world because of some misguided belief that they do run the world. And I'm talking elites, the 1%, banksters, all of them. But at the end of the day, some they forget that they are still bound by the human element, the human condition. Even if they're, even if the world immediately around them is technological in nature, <laughs> it's still limited by them, they themselves, humans, the human condition. And by that, I mean, always going to be a lack of openness. And as you grow older, I feel like that openness becomes closure. Get it? Get it? <laughs> as people grow older, depending on where they are and d depending on what stage they find themselves in their lives. Maybe they got a family, maybe they don't. Some begin to grow old and mature and seek less risk and more stability. And in doing so, they forget. They forget what they learned when they were younger. When we were younger, we learned that the only constant is change. Nothing Literally nothing is predictable.
Chaos theory is the only theory. And in that knowledge, they grow into that understanding <laughs> and they begin to be, either they begin to believe or they convince themselves or they they lie to themselves and and believe it to convince themselves that they have some grasp of control over chaos that whatever order exists in their lives is by their own doing and only to some extent it is so long as they are still accepting chaos what you think retirement is natural you think <laughs> How do I phrase that? Hold on. How do I phrase that? You think... See, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to categorize retirement, generosity, charity as, as natural elements that we've evolved into. But at the same time, we've grown dependent on as we mature as we get older because when we were younger i mean when humans are younger when people are younger they have to hustle their way through life they have to learn early on socialize with their parental figures with their guardians with siblings, with other family members, with neighbors, friends and acquaintances. Have to learn to get what they want and how to advocate for themselves to whatever extent they're able to develop themselves. <laughs> some, some people stop developing at a young age and some people develop well into older age but the moment you pull back the moment you want to keep control the, the moment the moment you depend on someone else's i don't know how, how don't say you don't know, Alex. You got this. The moment you depend on someone else's generosity, someone else's charity as an expectation. There you go. There you go. That's that's what it was. As an expectation, as an entitlement. That moment you feel entitled to charity, generosity without contribution, the moment you stop being grateful for waking up, that moment when you stop being creative and you'll actually suppress creativity, suppress innovation in order to maintain your position in life regardless of age and experience. The moment you commit to death, death is what you will get. So that's why I'm not holding on to 2021. A toast to letting go slowly. A toast to not forgetting the good and the bad. 
a toast to keeping those lessons alive and well, not having to repeat them, not having to relearn them. <laughs> I look forward to what 2022 has for us. I look forward to 2022 as a whole on a wholesome level. Corporate cowboys are nothing new. Sure, I might have coined it. I might have got it out there before everybody else. Other people might have tried to piggyback on the term. But I'm the one who's actively putting in work to make it something. Now, just because I'm coming across your speakers and you're listening to me, you might think that Alex is by himself or Alex is alone. We're never alone. I'm never by myself. I'm powered by my associates incorporating other associates. <laughs> I appreciate each and every one of you that's been a part of this journey. I can't tell you how much I mean, I could, yeah, I, I can tell you how much this medium of communication has helped me become a better person. And that's what, and that, that's what the whole advent of communication and technology is about, is the more you communicate, the better apt you are at communicating especially when you communicate with others. It's always fun expressing my ideas, getting feedback, getting uh, criticism, getting critiqued on how it is I speak, what I talk about, <laughs> what are good topics of conversation to have in public, in certain circles, and with certain squares, if you will. It's always fun to explore. The imagination and the potential it holds, especially at the level of the organization, especially at the group level. Going against group think is one thing But confronting, not so much challenging, but confronting and addressing organizational culture, the culture of a whole organization, of a group of people oriented to think with a certain bias. I mean, there's power in that. It's political in a sense. But I don't necessarily have any political aspirations. I've done my part. As far as leadership goes, as far as what leaders do, so I'll take what I've learned I'll reinvest it in 2022. And obviously, the motive is using it for good. If you haven't visited our pages on social media, do that. 
It's Corporate Cowboys on Instagram. You'll find us. You could also subscribe to the podcast on Patreon. Probably be releasing bonus material come 2022. That's a good objective. That's a good goal to keep in mind. But given our busy schedules, um, myself and other associates don't run into each other with enough frequency to be predictable, which is good and bad in a sense, but ultimately good because we're not tied to each other's hip and they all have the independence the autonomy they require to be capable corporate cowboys in and of themselves this work doesn't require anyone else it just requires you you don't need a parent to hold you by the hand you don't need mommy and daddy to prop you up and and fund you and feed you and wipe your ass for you. I mean, I got I got no animosity towards trust fund kids, towards individuals who come from privilege. Not at all. Some are are very nice to be around, very humble open to learn, willing to interact and, and, and be familiar, you know, like they, they don't set themselves apart because they come from a different echelon in society, an echelon that's easily infiltrated, mind you, and infiltrate is a harsh word, but an echelon that is Easily accessible. There you go. Can be accessed with ease. A little finesse. And a smile, of course. Because we have to be nice in return, right? You gotta pay it forward. Pay respects to get respect. Out of respect for respect. <laughs> Fucking Alex. I expect 2022 to have about as much if not more positive moments opportunities for laughter opportunities for growth and uh every year i say this but way less times of solace times of uh times for grievance that's what I want, at least. I don't want to feel solemn. I don't want to grieve. So as the world turns, just got to recognize that life goes on with or without us. And that's a funny thought, because as important as we might make ourselves out to be we really aren't we're just a piece of what's important so long as you carry on the road for good the road to purity creation and ultimately innovation If you haven't dropped the street life to pick up a book, how about letting go of it slowly? Pick up a book. See, notice how I didn't say let it go completely. I get it. Folks got to wean themselves off. Video games. How about you start cutting it back? Oh, but the PS5 just came out with the fucking dick-sucking apparatus. Okay, 
right? How about you not use that for an hour a day and instead pick up a fucking book and read that? It's about how you invest your time. And don't get caught lacking. Because that video game play may or may not help you in the future. Depending on where it is that you're archiving it in your mind, in your life, in your soul. Man, I remember when I was younger. That's what I wanted. I wanted to just be entertained. I wanted to live a life of pleasure. A life of uh, debauchery, I guess you could call it, to the fullest extent. I thought I could get into esports but we were always poor so i had to live out my fantasies reading books fiction and non-fiction i mean i enjoy some creative writing every now and then and then and then a sobering reality I feel like a healthy balance is what's needed nowadays. But health and balance are such fickle things in today's society. I think they've always been. Come to think of it. In retrospect, you know, just in reflection, I feel like health and balance are difficult to achieve and maintain over time when life has so many other options, so many carnal temptations. It's hard to look away from the bullshit. It's like watching a fiery train crash. But even if we let go of it in 2021, it doesn't mean that it won't carry over. It won't all come to a head and boil over into 2022. That's just what happens when you're in the kitchen. But... We're corporate cowboys. We can handle the heat. It's what we signed up for. Otherwise, we wouldn't have lasted this long. It's something that we had to want. It's the change. This is the change that we needed to see when we were younger. I mean, life in corporate when I was younger, I was obviously much more uh, innocent, we'll call it, naive. Naivety was the order of the day. <laughs> I got taken advantage of plenty of times before I learned to uh, to turn the other cheek. That is to turn the page. Whenever I say turn the other cheek, now it's like, it literally is just the opposite. Do the opposite. Do unto them what they expected from you. 
you do unto them. You do good now. Don't get smacked in the face once and turn the other fresh cheek to get fucking slapped again. I don't know. I, that's That seems like petty cowardice. It's like, yeah, maybe the meek might inherit the earth, right? But notice how they didn't say anything about rulers and governors. The meek are going to inherit all positions of inferiority at the rate things are going. But then again, I'm just coming from one side. It's always good to have an objective point of view accounting for both sides. Otherwise, you've got an incomplete picture. So, I must also temper my ambitions my uh, bravado, if you will, with meekness, with affability, so I can be amicable, so I can be amiable, so I can be fucking, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe I should also, also seek to uh, curse less, to use less vulgarity on the episodes. But every now and then, in order to evoke emotion, to spark that effect in the mind, I feel like it's because I can't reach through the microphone and slap you in the face, right? And have you turn the other cheek. I think it's best to use words that convey that emotion and jostle your brain your fucking cortex your fucking your cerebellum your fucking uh uh what's the uh is it the neocortex it's a thinking into piecing together some creative solution to this pressing matter before you which is would be me dropping the F word. Otherwise, I'd be standing before you, palm opened, black leather glove in that bitch, smacking your bitch ass into action. But, you know, it's also more beneficial to attract flies with, what is it, honey than shit. I don't know if that's how the saying goes, but I think that saying is bullshit because honey, honey is for bees and humans. Flies love shit. Love it. Couldn't pull it. You, you couldn't pull them off of it. <laughs> He'd stick right back to it. So you can't hate a fly for naturally being a fly. But, uh, you could show and appreciate, which I mean, I guess might appear to be hatred, but you could appreciate a human for being a piece of shit because humans are meant to evolve. Humans are meant to develop continually. If one thing is meant to be consistent in life... It's the theory of chaos. It's the theory of growth. It's the theory of discomfort. You gotta... You gotta... Grow comfortable... With the idea of being uncomfortable. I'm forgetting where I heard that now. I think it was in... Law school. But you have to grow uncomfortable... With... The feeling of being uncomfortable. And 
it was at that point that, well, I learned a couple of things. I realized a couple of things because at that point in my life in law school, I had already trained myself to uh, not eat a full day's meal or at least at least keep that feeling of being hungry always because if I was ever satisfied, I would, uh, I would just languish. I would fucking, I would, I would grow, um, lethargic. I would just be lethargic. I'd move lethargically. I I wouldn't move actively. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be as sharp. I wouldn't be as witty or as charismatic because I wouldn't have a need. I wouldn't be hungry to eat. And that's probably where a lot of the emotion and the energy comes from, which I'm still to this day. I'm in my 30s now. I'm learning to temper. I'm learning to uh, uh, regulate. I don't want to qualify regulation yet, whether I'm down regulating or up regulating. Um I'm sure there will come a day. I'm sure there will come a day when I have to. You see, I'm also, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm also trying to use less contractions when I speak. So I would like to pronounce and enunciate all my words clearly in my speech. Why? Because uh, it'll it'll serve me as far as uh, vocabulary and flexibility and uh, linguistic dexterity. I've just I've just got to change up my mo. I have to constantly be changing up my mo, and I don't talk about criminality a whole lot. I think as things become to to formalize, as things become more formalized with corporate cowboys and associates, incorporating associates between the two of them and amongst our associates and affiliates, think criminality is going to little by little take preeminence as far as topics of discussion goes because at the end of the day it's what attracts new ideas new ideas for staying ahead of of regulation staying ahead of retirement of motherfuckers who want things to be one way, to be settled, and settled in their favor. Unfortunately, that's just not how life intended life to end. It doesn't end at your feet. It ends with you off of your feet. It ends in death. So you got to work until you're not here. If you stop working halfway, motherfuckers will find a way to steamroll you, to roll you over, to keep you moving. And if you resist, there's a hole somewhere with your name on it. (laughs) That's the life in corporate. It's a great life. It's very fulfilling, very satisfying. I'm just giving you the bare bones, skeletonized version. And if it sounds gritty, if it sounds graphic, if it sounds gruesome, if it sounds ghoulish, it's because it is. It's because it's life. Those individuals who've had an opportunity to... uh, build and accumulate wealth without having to have gotten into debt. Like my pipe dreams when I was younger, I wanted to get into esports, right? 
shit, if they could pay me for doing drugs, I'd be doing drugs, right? I'd be making loot, millions upon millions and fucking and endorsement deals and, and sponsorships. Hell yeah. That, that path obviously wasn't for me. That's not the path that I'm on. Sooner or later, I will cross paths with those individuals. And I, if I can't line them up to work with me and incorporate them, I mean, there's consequences to chaos. Life just goes on. Shake hands and part ways. But business being how business is, if I take care of it, it will take care of me. So I'm not worried in the least. Because I already know where I'm headed. I already know the direction I'm going. It's for something better. This shit just looks self-destructive. But I'm having fun. And that's half the battle. It's laughing at your own jokes. <laughs> I remember hearing somebody say one time that uh, life is a punchline. I think this motherfucker's on drugs now. Um, he was an old high school friend of mine. And I, miss, I miss that fool. But uh, I think we came up with the joke together. Um, life is a joke and death is the punchline and um and from that we had so many spin-offs like smile now laugh later and it, it was always a very a very positive but cynic way cynical way of looking at life but I wouldn't give it up man I, I would not give my life up regardless of the struggles that I've had I wouldn't do shit differently I wouldn't have done anything differently for two reasons one because doing so would require me to apologize fucking serious if anything i'll double down right just on principle that's number one so doing so would require me to apologize and number two redemption who, who am i going to redeem myself to i i don't have superiors to redeem myself to that i owe something to Like if I'm gonna fear anything, I'm 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 gonna fear what I have to do. And this is this ain't me now advocating, you know, preaching God, preaching the gospel. Nah. This is me preaching the rational. Preaching secularism, if you will. It's looking ahead. And recognizing I'm one individual, part of a system, part of many more systems. That you you can't you can't and and, and I'm fucking dragging on. This is becoming a rant. <laughs> I'll leave it there, I think. The next is, uh, maybe the next episode will be about social contracts. Do they exist? Yeah, question mark? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to wish y'all a safe and responsible New Year's Eve. And, uh, if you're in line now all systems are go and you're just waiting for the signal 
bring 2022 in with a bang. Catch you on the flip side. Good luck.